What I'm trying to tell you is, nowadays you give da'wah to someone and you expect them to turn around and turn into a sahabi, or if not sahabi, sahabi, at least a tabi'i, within 24 hours. Bro, I told you it's haram yesterday. Why are you still doing it, bro? Astaghfirullah al azim These people don't even change, man. I already gave them da'wah. They didn't change. I already told them. I gave a whole 20-minute khutbah. And look, nothing changed. Man, can you like go read something about Nuh alayhi salam or something, dude? He has a right to say people don't change. <laughs> you don't have a right to say that. And by the way, it is not your words or my words that change people. It is not our words that change people. It is Allah that changes people. I start from here because this talk is supposed to be a balance between dunya and akhirah. And the first thing I want to share with you is sometimes in our da'wah, we kill the hopes of people. We expect too much from them too quickly. As a matter of fact, when you give someone da'wah, even as a Muslim who is in disobedience to Allah, <coughs> a lot of young guys came to me today and said, my friends in college, they drink, Muslim friends. They drink, they do drugs and they do worse. And I'm trying to give them advice, what do I do? I don't know what to do with these guys. They don't want to come with me to Jumu'ah. They don't want to come with me to the masjid. I try to make them watch a YouTube video, they don't want to hear it. I don't know what to do with them. And you know what I say? You just need to be patient with them and keep giving them a reminder. And don't give up on them. Because you don't know which of your words are going to be planted inside their heart like a seed. And you don't know when that seed, Allah will grow it. You don't know. Maybe it'll happen a year from now that the words you said to them click. Maybe it'll happen 10 years from now. Maybe it'll, it'll happen overnight. That is not up to us. Which is why in the very same ayah, when Allah towards the end, in this ayah of da'wah, what does He tell us? He tells us, Inna rabbaka huwa a'lam. Allah knows better who's guided and who's misguided. In other words, what you see, you think someone is guided, you think someone is misguided, Allah is telling you, I know better than you who's guided and who isn't. There's something going on in a person's heart. This girl's not wearing hijab, she's dressed like you can't even tell she's Muslim, but there's a turbulence inside her heart, and her heart is turning back to Allah. And she is closer to Allah in her transition at this moment than somebody who on the outside look, looks like a perfect Muslim. I want to tell you a crazy story, but before I do, I got to drink some water. True story, last Ramadan, actually two Ramadans ago, I was in Texas, after Taraweeh, you get a little extra hungry, so there's only like two restaurants open in Texas, in Dallas, so we go to this one place late night, we're sitting there, a bunch of guys, we're having dinner, and the table next to us are two young women that are dressed fairly inappropriately by Islamic standards, we don't think they're Muslim, we don't think they're Muslim. And because the tables are rather close, they're talking to each other and one of them says, I feel so bad. I haven't prayed in like a year. And the other one said, me too. It's Ramadan, we should go. I think I have a hijab in my car. This is a conversation the two of these are having. I'm trying to eat a shawarma. And I pause like, uh, what? And they got up in the middle of their meal. They didn't even finish their meal, they left. The masjid must still be open right now because it's Ramadan, they keep it open all night. Let's go. I think I still remember where it is. And I tell you, I don't know. Allah knows. I don't know that the two raka'ah these girls made, maybe don't even, they don't even remember how to make wudu. I don't know. Maybe don't even know like another surah after the Fatiha. I don't know. Maybe they don't even know how many raka'ah for Aisha they're supposed to pray. I don't know. But maybe their salah, is more valuable to Allah than somebody who's a hafiz of Quran who prayed the entire night and his head was somewhere else. Who was only reciting to show off to people. We don't know, we cannot judge the outside from the inside. We can't, we, we can only see the outside. That's it, that's all we know. So our attitude towards people when we invite them to Islam has to change. Our sense of judgment has to change because we are making them hopeless. We make them feel like they'll never make it to Jannah. 